G'day everyone. If your kid had leukemia, would you A, take them to an all natural healer who uses pre-modern healing methods, or B, go to a modern hospital and get the best damn chemo available? Now, if you're watching this channel, you're probably gonna go with option B, even though chemotherapy involves some pretty chemicals. But right now, something else is very sick. The patient is planet Earth. And brace yourself, guys, the treatment is GMOs. Look, I know many of you watching this show may be anti-GMO, and I'll be honest, GMOs have a bit of a, shall we say, an imperfect history. One of the most famous cases that landed GMOs in the doghouse was the Roundup controversy. We're all vaguely familiar with the story. Monsanto modified the genetic code of soybean crops so they wouldn't die when they were sprayed with the weed killer Roundup. But like horny teenagers with Axe body spray, those farmers sprayed the shit out of their crops, dousing them with Roundup and causing a whole lot of chemical runoff and just bad now, the bad shit wasn't actually done by the GMOs. It was done by the overuse of Roundup. But that's a distinction without a difference, and the damage was already done. Now, here's the thing. Genetic modification of crops has completely changed in the last few years, thanks to CRISPR, a genetic engineering tool that allows for very precise editing of the genetic code. Old GMOs, like the ones used to create the flavor saver tomato and the Roundup resistant crops, use a methodology that's most easily described as grabbing one gene from one organism and shoving it into another organism. For example, grabbing the glow gene from bioluminescent jellyfish and using a virus to shoot that gene into the DNA code of cats. Creepy, right? Basically, Old technologies grabbed whole genes from one organism and shoved them into the genetic code of another organism. It's kind of like grabbing an old copy of the Gutenberg Bible and shoving in a copy of Dreams from my father. The end result may be a better read, but it's still a huge modification. But CRISPR is a lot more like using a word processor. You can change just one single letter of the whole code. So instead of modifying a whole gene, scientists can go into the existing gene and just tweak singular base pairs. Now, while old GMO technology makes big changes that can result in big problems, CRISPR can handle small changes. So there's a more predictable outcome. And that's why we shouldn't think of CRISPR GMOs the same way as we think of old school GMOs. And it's why I believe that if you wanna save the planet, you should probably be encouraging CRISPR. By adding tiny tweaks to plant DNA, as CRISPR does, crops can be bred to require less water and to be immune to disease. And that leads to better crop yields, which means we need less land, and so we don't need to cut down as many trees. Less deforestation is good because deforestation leads to global warming, the single greatest threat facing the planet. Yes, we should be cautious with new technologies. And yes, GMOs have a bad rap. And yes, the big ag companies that started them have done some dodgy shit. But CRISPR GMOs are different and they may be our best and possibly our last hope for saving the planet. There may be some unknown downsides with GMO tech, just as any change may have unforeseen consequences. But with CRISPR, the unknowns are a lot less unknown than they used to be. But what we do know is that the alternative is a dead planet. Our planet is already really sick. If it were my child, I'd be giving it a healthy dose of CRISPR GMO crops. But what do you guys think? I'm looking forward to a very spirited debate in the comments below. Hi everyone, I'm Jade Lovell, resident science nerd on the Young Turks Network. You're watching SciQ and we know you don't want to miss an episode, so please click the subscribe button down below.